So, what is phototherapy and therapeutic photography? I recently recorded an interview with a good friend of mine that was conducted in Farsi and that was about the therapeutic photography and phototherapy and I thought it's only fair if I also make this short video and explain the whole thing in English. So hopefully this will be something useful for you if you're interested to know more about therapeutic photography and phototherapy. So basically we have these two approach as I mentioned therapeutic photography is usually a photographer using photography as a means of self-expression and understanding self which is very helpful. Therapeutic photography on the other hand is defined as the use of photography in a therapeutic setting under the direction of or supervision of a trained psychotherapist in order to reduce mental health related issues or provide insight and personal growth. The history of the use of photography in mental health goes back to, you know, 1850, which is the first person that we know that has documented this is a psychiatrist, Dr. Diamond that he had a book that I actually posted on one of the other posts on Instagram that he started taking pictures of his patients in, with the hope of seeing if he can portray the person's you know, body language and the difference that they look when they are anxious, they are depressed or happy or whatever mood they are in. That's an interesting photo selection. I encourage you guys to look it up and see the original work. But mainly the work that has been done in phototherapy is in 1970s and after. One of the prominent you know, individuals who has worked tremendously in this field is Judy Weiser, a Canadian psychologist who is still very active and has workshops that trains uh, psychologists and psychotherapists in order to utilize photography in their therapeutic work. And what I really like to address here is to really make a brief approach in understanding the use of photography so everybody can use this, which might be more in the field of therapeutic photography, that how can you utilize photography and why photography is so useful. First, I need to address something we call it projective hypothesis. So let me read that to make sure that I'm giving you an exact definition. The projective hypothesis says, when people try to understand vague or ambiguous, unstructured stimuli, the interpretation they produce reflects their needs, feelings, experience, prior conditioning, and thought process. This is by Lawrence Frank in 1939. What does this mean? You guys can all imagine that Whenever we look at a scene, let's say we all look at sky and looking at the clouds. Almost mm, a lot of people see different things in the clouds. I know some of us might see the same things, but some people might see more things. So basically what we say is that whatever we see in a, in a vague scene reflects the things that are in our own unconscious. And you guys probably are familiar with the famous Rorschach test that is basically some shapes, 10 cards, we show it to people. They look at it and they tell us what they see in it. And based on what they see in it, we can really have a clear picture of their reflection of what is inside. So let's assume that projective hypothesis is there. Now, whenever we take picture, we are projecting our own needs outside into a scene. So by studying our pictures, we can gain a better understanding of what is happening inside. Also, photography has certain qualities about it that is very useful, beside this projective hypothesis, that we project our you know, needs and desires and drives outside into the scene. One of the things is that photography is a skill in a sense. So whenever we take picture, it's satisfying because we're learning something to expose a picture right, make it look good. So it's also satisfying as learning a skill. Another thing about photography that is useful is photography usually brings socialization. I know these days we have to be careful 
during the pandemic. But generally speaking, when we have a camera in our hand, we go out there, we connect to others and others connect to us. It creates a kind of connection. Another aspect of photography that is very important is that it freezes time. So that's why most of us have family albums, either in the classical format or digital, because we like to capture the moments that we have good moments and good time, and we can look at it, look back at it later. So by looking at the picture, we are freezing time, and this allows us to study that time which was probably a fraction of a second. But then we can look at that fraction for as long as we wish, and we can gain a better understanding of that moment and the mood. Another aspect of photography that is helpful is also being like a mirror, especially if we aim the camera back at ourselves. So what I encourage you to do is to do some selfies, to take some selfies. These days we see everyone, you know, using and utilizing selfies on social media, which is interesting. But this time what I'm proposing is that try to take picture, but do not try to pose for that picture. Try to look good. Try to really present yourself the way you feel in that moment, in that scene. And try to be as truthful as you can, at least to yourself. You don't have to post this picture, you don't have to show it to anyone, but you can use it as a form of diary. So if you do this like on a daily basis, take a picture of yourself when you're happy, when you're sad, when you're thinking about something, then gradually you're going to have a nice selection of images that shows your feelings during certain period of time. That you can actually utilize this and add some text to it. So make it a digital diary. Mix pictures with text. That would be a great you know, selection that you can really use it to gain a better understanding of how you feel, especially if you're going through some difficult time. Joe Spence was a British photographer that started documenting her own cancer treatment and to understand it better, to cope with it better. And these are amazing pictures that are still out there. You can find them online. Unfortunately, she eventually died of her cancer, but you can still see how powerful those images are and how vulnerable she made herself in front of her own camera and for everyone else to see how it means and how does it feel when we go through that painful time. So at the end of this video, I like to propose and give you an exercise. Try to take three pictures and th these are all self-portrait in one picture try to take a picture of the way you see yourself the true self how you truly feel do not try to pose try to be as truthful to your feelings as you can take a picture the next picture take a selfie try to present yourself the way you think people see you Let's say, for example, I take a picture of myself here in suit and tie, and people see me this way. So I take a picture of this. Then the last picture I want you to take is that take a picture of yourself the way you want people to see you, the way you want to be seen. Let's say I want to be this powerful man, this spiritual guru, whatever I might want people to see me that way. So I take a picture that way. So we have three pictures that I want you to put them in one picture. So these three poses next to each other, showing the way you truly see yourself, the way you think people see you, and the way you want to be seen. Looking at these pictures at, next to each other will bring you a lot of interesting introspection and see if there are any discrepancies and differences that you hope to address. As usual, thank you for watching this video. If you have any recommendations, suggestions, questions, please do not shy away from posting them here. I'll make sure I address them. Thank you so much. Have a great day.